2022 Subaru WRX. Now this is the fifth generation of the iconic rally vehicle and it is all brand spanking new. So I wanna take you through some of the cosmetic details before we hit the road. Now there's a lot to like in this car, but there's a lot where I'm like, eh, really? I mean, like these fender arches, like first of all, I hate the asymmetricality of it. I don't care if that's not a word, they're asymmetrical, I don't like it. I also don't like the texture on these things. However, I really do like what's going on in the rear here with these taillights. They look like they're inspired from the BRZ and that is never a bad thing. And then again, up here in front, I've got a wider grill. I've got sleeker headlamps. Plus the whole thing is a little bit longer overall and a little bit wider. But you know what? Who cares how it looks? Let's GTFO out of the city and find some curves. So what we've got here is a 2.4 liter engine. It's a little bit bigger than the two liter of last year, but it is still a turbocharged four cylinder. Now, if you're thinking that you're gonna get just a tiny bit more power out of that, just a tiny little bit bigger engine, you're right. You get a tiny bit more power, 271 ponies, but the same amount of torque, 258 pound feet of it. But that torque curve has moved, so it's much more usable. And on a road like this, I mean, like I can just hang out in third gear all day long, break for a turn, come out of it, and the power band is right there. I don't even have to downshift. But sometimes I want to downshift because I got a six speed manual. Yeah, buddy. Now you can get a continuously variable automatic transmission, but listen, really, like, why would you? Unless you don't have full use of both your legs, just do yourself a favor and get yourself the manual. It's the way the WRX was meant to be enjoyed. I mean, I love this car because it's just, it's so simple. It has one job and that is to be a fun little rally inspired runabout and it totally delivers. The power here is usable. I don't need to go to a track to exploit this car. I can do it all right here for free on these back roads. The pedals are set up so that I can pretty easily heel toe even with my dainty little lady feet. And the ride is a little bit softer than it was last year. I mean, you guys don't get me wrong. This is not my grandmother's Cadillac, but neither do I feel like I need to be wearing a sports bra if you know what I'm talking about. And a lot of that comfort comes despite the fact this car is much more rigid than last year. Heck, even the sway bar is attached to the body this year and not the subframe. So when I'm going through these turns, I mean, it's just really flat cornering. I'm mean, like, this is the best day ever. electric assist and do I want the hydraulic assist that you normally find in the WRX STI? I mean, yes, yes, I do. But like, come on, Emmy, don't push your luck. Now for an electric assist, look, it's pretty communicative. It's got a really quick ratio and I like the weight. Now, if you don't like the weight, well, that's just too bad because there aren't any drive modes in here. There's no comfort, there's no normal, there's no sport. You can get that but you gotta go for this CVT. In fact, if you want really any kind of advanced driver's aids, you're gonna have to go for the automatic. I mean, this car does have cruise control, but there's no adaptive cruise control. And I get it, it's really tough to have adaptive cruise control for a slow speed situation, but you can have it for higher speeds. Other manufacturers do it, and I really wish this had it. It would make long distance driving just so much easier. But at least I got blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert, so, you know, it's not all bad. They made a couple of changes to the inside as well. I really like that I've got an 11.6 inch portrait oriented screen. It's got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's pretty easy to use, but one thing I don't like is the fact that I've got to tap a button here to get my heated seats, and then I have to tap again to turn them on. I mean, when I want hot cross buns, I want them now. So like, just give me a hard button. I really like the flat bottom steering wheel here, and I'm a super huge fan of contrasting stitching, and here I get it in red. Now, for those of you enthusiasts who just think that there aren't any cool, fun cars out there, I mean, you guys think about it. We have the Hyundai Elantra N. It's comparable in power to this, and it has a six-speed manual. You could say the same thing for the Volkswagen Jetta GLI and the Golf GTI, but Subaru has an ace up its sleeve. I mean, those front-wheel drive cars are super fun to flog around, but this one has got all-wheel drive, which means that once the weather turns bad or the road turns to gravel, this Subaru is pretty much unstoppable.
The 2022 Subaru WRX starts at $30,100, including $995 for destination. Expect to pay a little bit more for the CVT, and this limited tester that you see here is sitting right at $36,990 American dollars. Okay, you guys, I wanna know what you think. Will the 2022 Subaru WRX hit the $30,000 mark or is it gonna stay below 30 grand? Let me know in the comments and always be sure to like and subscribe.